I would like to welcome you all here. My name is Natalia. The theme of my presentation is Loading Parameters Influence on Dynamic Curve. Let's talk about the strength of material. Under static loading, material fails if stress reaches a critical value at sigma c. But in case of dynamic loads, material can withstand higher stress than sigma c, and ultimate stress rises as load rate increases. Such stress rate dependence of ultimate stress are presented on picture 1. Usually, the dynamic curve are considered as a characteristic of material and used in studies and calculation as dynamic material strength. However, the recent experimental work show that the dynamic curve is not stable and can change for different parameters of loading. That will bring us to the following questions. What should we consider as dynamic strength? And how to predict dynamic strength in theoretical calculations? In the study, I will try to answer these questions. Aims of the study include the modeling of dynamic curves and consider how it change for different slot parameters. Also, calculation results should be verified with experimental data. In this work, the tensile cell dynamic strength is considered and spall fracture is useful too for studying the strength and dynamic processes when applying high stresses at short intervals. An impact impulse creates a compression wave in the sample. The wave propagates along the sample axis until it reaches a free surface. Upon reflection from the surface, the compression wave reverses sine and propagates backwards as tensor wave. Since the tensile strength of material is usually lower than its compressive strength, a failure occurs in the sample section x asterisk. Let us now proceed to consider modeling of spall fracture. Here, linear elasticity is assumed. Also, the experimental scheme allows us to apply one dimensionality of the problem. Thus, the time profile of stress can be obtained from the solution of the wave problem for a displacement W with boundary and initial conditions. Solution of this problem allows us to obtain time, stress time dependence for each sample section. Here V is the velocity of particles on the free surface, rho is the density and C is the sound velocity of the material. Here on the slide we can see a typical signal record from the laser interferometer that measures the free surface velocity. The first global minimum corresponds to the moment of registration by interferometer of spalling in the material. The further oscillation corresponds to wave movement along the spalled layer of the material. Duration of this rebound allows us to find the spall section. Also, from the graph, we can obtain the impact impulse form that is necessary in further stress calculation. Therefore, by using the free surface velocity profile, it is possible to determine the spall section, the fracture time, and impact impulse. Now we have all data to calculate stress time dependence in spall section. Here you can see calculation for experiment presented on previous slide. Negative values of stress are taken to be compressive stress, and positive values of tensile stress. The dashed line here is stress calculated according to the equation presented on the slide, and the solid line is stress that material can withstand. Fracture occurs at time t asterisk. Thus, we can obtain the ultimate stresses and tensile stress rate. This data will allow us to build dynamic stress dependence for experiments. In the modeling of dynamic curve for various input forms, there were two ways of changing the loading rate, keeping proportion of the input form. In the first, the amplitude P is fixed and the duration changed, as we see in the left picture. Or, on the contrary, the duration T is fixed and the amplitude changed, as shown on the right picture. Using solution of wave equation, we can calculate the time profile of stress in each section of the material. However, it is necessary to establish the condition of fracture. In this work, the incubation time criterion was used. Its formulation is presented on the slide. Here, tau is incubation time, sigma c is the static strength of material. Then the cross-section, where the fracture criteria is fulfilled earlier than in the, in the others, will be the spall section. 
The graph shows the calculation of stress for trapezoidal inputs in this pole section. The criterion is satisfied on the blue highlighted area, which duration equals tau. At the end of the area, fracture occurs that is indicated by an asterisk on the graph. To verify the model, it is necessary to select experimental data where the impact inputs vary according to the ways described above. For this, data were selected from four studies on spalling of ultra poor aluminium. Necessary in modeling mechanic parameters of the material are presented in the table. Let's move on to the modeling result. Dots on the graph are experimental data, and lines are the result of modeling. Each curve corresponds to a calculation performed for one given impulse form. The obtained dependencies are presented for two waves of stress rate changing. When modeling the left graph, the impulse duration was changing. For the right graph, the amplitude was changing. In this case, there is a limit amplitude below which fracture doesn't occur. This is shown on the right picture. As we can see, the dynamic strength curve is unstable, and it depends not only on the loading rate, but also on the impulse form. Additionally, the obtained calculations correlate well with experimental data. Concluding what has been said above, the modeling of spall fracture shows that dynamic strength curve depends not only on the stress rate, but also on parameters of impulse. The incubation time approach allows us to take into account the loading history and model this instability in the loading rate dependence of ultimate stress. So, responding to question posed in the beginning, in the frame of this approach, we can consider the pair of incubation time and sigma c is a characteristic of material strengths that allow us to predict dynamic strengths. And finally, using dynamic strength dependencies in the modeling or other calculations, it is important to consider the loading conditions on the material when the formation of experimental data was made. Thank you for your attention.